Now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor form, the major left, the powerful king, composer, holy though, yeah, holy though, yeah, holy though, yeah, holy though, yeah, holy though, yeah. Holy you need a proof you saw her bathing on the roof her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you she turned you to a kitchen chair she broke your throat she cut your head and from your lips she drew Maybe I have been here before I know this room I've walked this floor I used to live alone before I knew you I've seen your flag on the marble arch And love is not a victory match It's a cold and it's a broken You let me know what's really going on below, but now you never show it to me, do you? Remember when he moved in here, the holy dove was moving too.
I haven't combed my hair in a week, can you tell? <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is a Leonard Cohen song, a Canadian composer. And it's been around for decades and a lot of people have sang it. Became very popular um, with the Shrek movies. It was one of the theme songs in the Shrek movies. Um, and there's a lot of really interesting references in this song. The name of the song, Hallelujah, that's a word it means praise to God, an exaltation or rejoicing, an act of worship or praise to God. That's the name, what, what the meaning of the name uh, or the word hallelujah is. Okay? So he writes in verse 1, I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? That's a biblical reference to the Old Testament um, story where King David would play for King Saul and King Saul was troubled by evil spirits and when David would play music for him the evil spirits would leave Saul and they you know quit troubling him and Saul would finally find peace and rest for his soul and then he throws a little music theory in there it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall and the major lift and the baffled king composing hallelujah verse 2 more Old Testament references. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty in the moonlight overthrew you. And this part, he's talking about King David. Um, he went out on his roof, and one day he saw Bathsheba bathing on her rooftop. And he lusted after her, and he wanted to, you know, to have her. And so he, you know, she was married to Uriah, but he was the king, and he had his way with her and committed adultery. And, uh, and then to hide his adultery, uh, you know, he sent Uriah to the front lines in a battle and, and made sure that Uriah, and told everyone to pull back so that Uriah would be killed. So basically it was premeditated murder. King David committed premeditated murder to cover up his adultery. And then he lied to cover up his murder. So it was like, you know, one sin after another. And finally Nathan came to him and confronted him and David confessed his sins. So it's interesting to remember, the Bible calls King David a man after God's own heart. And yet we can see that David had a lot of flaws. King David had many, many flaws. And yet he was still a man after God's own heart. Interesting concept. Okay, the next few verses are another Old Testament reference. She tied you to a kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips, she drew the hallelujah. That is an Old Testament reference to the story of Samson and Delilah. 
Remember, Samson was really strong in the spirit of the Lord, and Delilah cut his hair. And when he did, he lost his strength, and he was overpowered. Okay? Baby, I have been here before. I know this room. I've walked this floor. I used to live alone before I knew you. Um, I've seen your flag in the marble arch. Love is not a victory march. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. Many different meanings here. You know, he's kind of on the verge of maybe a breakup. Or he sees that the end is in sight for this relationship. But, but also, it speaks of the brokenness of the human soul. You know, This word hallelujah meaning worship, exaltation. Uh, a word of praise, and yet we speak it in brokenness more so than we speak it in wholeness, you know? Some people say that the most precious worship we can offer is worship in our brokenness, where we are naked before God, where we are, have been, you know, the, the pride of life has been sifted away from us, and there's nothing left but our humility and our brokenness. And some say that, that that's worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. Verse 4, there was a time you let me know what's really going on below, but now you never show it to me, do you? All right, so, you know, maybe maybe this is, you know, he, it could, you could be talking about a, a relationship you have with someone. You used to be close. They used to, you know, uh, you used to be sort of a confidant, right? And they trusted you and they would come to you and now they don't, they don't tell you anything. But also, it could be our relationship with God, right? You know, there are times we've been close to the Lord and there are times we've been far away. And sometimes we let ourselves drift far away. And and God misses us, you know? When, when we don't come to Him every day with, you know, with our issues and our problems, and when we don't walk with Him, and, on a daily basis, he misses us, you know? There was a time you let me know, God says to each of us, what's really going on below, but now you never show it to me, do you? You know, we get too busy for God, too busy with our job, too busy with our hobbies, too busy with the cares of life and that weigh us down. Next thing you know, we're not fellowshipping with God at all. And I changed the words just a tiny bit, but, and remember when he moved in you, the holy dove was moving too, and every breath we drew was hallelujah. And that sweet fellowship, you know, that, that beautiful act of worship. We, we sing a song of praise to God with our life, not just with our lips. Um, verse five is an interesting verse. You say, I took a name in vain, but I don't even know the name. But if I did, well, really, what's it to you? And that's a fair statement. Um, if you don't know the Lord, it doesn't mean much to you to take his name in vain, right? But if, if you do know the Lord, think of it like this. Imagine you met the love of your life, your soulmate, you know, a woman or a man, wife or husband, whatever that is to you. But the point I'm making is, well, their name is something special to you, right? You know, what if what if his name was Sam? Or what if her name was Emily? Okay, or something like that. I'm just making this up. But, or Abigail or whatever. Well, if every time something went wrong, somebody yelled, Abigail or Sam, you know, that would be like fingernails on a chalkboard for you. Because you love that person. That's the love of your life. That's your soulmate. And, and these people are using their name in a derogatory way, or they're using their name to describe something bad, like a curse. And so if you can't understand that, if, if, if that seems too strange to you, think of it maybe like in, in that way. You know, some names are sacred. And, uh, you know, personally, I believe in Jesus Christ. Um, I tried many things before I came to to believe in him and for me he was the truth the only truth out of all the other things i tried and i tried many things in life um i believe what jesus said he says i'm the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father but through me and i believe that and and so the name jesus and 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 god these are sacred names and it, it does bother me when someone takes that name in vain 
But I could understand if, if you don't believe in God or you don't believe in Jesus, not a big deal for you, right? But think of it like this, you know, out of love and out of kindness, I also don't want to go around insulting Buddha. I don't want to go around and speak bad about Muhammad. Um, or I'm trying to think of, is it Vishnu? You know, they had, I, I don't want to speak bad about what other people believe either. Even though I believe in Jesus and I, I don't believe what they believe, out of respect and out of love and kindness, I don't want to grieve those people. I don't want to act uh, in a selfish or inconsiderate way towards those people. Uh, so it's interesting talking about the name of the name. There's a blaze of light in every word. It doesn't matter which you've heard, the holy or the broken. Hallelujah. And I like that. Again, the holy hallelujah, you know, when we feel great and like we're doing everything right and like we're just, you know, perfect before the Lord. And the broken hallelujah, when we feel like we can't even raise our eyes up to heaven. We can't even lift our head up. We, we feel like everything we've ever done is wrong and everything's a mistake and, and nothing's working out. Either way, the holy or the broken hallelujah. It's spoken. It's a beautiful word, you know? It's an act of worship. When everything is going right and when everything is going wrong. Maybe there's a God above. And maybe you question that. Maybe there is a God above, you know? I searched for the truth for a long time. And I went through a period where I wasn't sure. I didn't really believe. I know there's a God above. But maybe you're questioning that, right? Maybe maybe you're not sure. Hmm. All I've ever learned from love was how to shoot at someone who outdrew you. And so I think somewhat he's looking for true love, you know? We're all looking for true love and we all find fake love. You know, we're all looking for love in the wrong places. I mean, we can all identify with that song, right? Um, we've all been there. And yet we all long for true love. Who doesn't want to be loved unconditionally? Who doesn't want to be loved completely and unselfishly and totally by another being? That's just a desire that's deep inside us. It doesn't matter our race, our gender, our nationality, our religion. We long for real, true, unconditional love. That satisfies a hunger deep inside of us. Right? And uh, it's not the cry you hear at night. It's not someone who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. Again, the, there's the hallelujah that's, that's, you know, when everything is going right. And there's the hallelujah of brokenness. Absolute brokenness. You know, when we've hit the bottom and all we can do is look up. You know, God is there. God cares. Last verse, verse 7. I did my best. It wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. It's almost like he's at the end of his life and he's looking back and he's analyzing things. I think we've all been here, you know. We did our best, but it still wasn't enough. We did our best, but it wasn't good enough. We did, we did the best we could do. We tried as hard as we could try. And sometimes it still falls apart. And that's what the grace of God is for. I told the truth. I didn't come to fool you. I'm not going to try to hide my weaknesses and my foolishness. No, nope, not at all. Why? Because the scripture says that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. The scripture says that the weakness of God is stronger than my strength. And the foolishness of God is wiser than my wisdom. <laughs> So I'll boast about my weakness. I will manifest and display and put my weaknesses on, you know, on display for all to see that God may be glorified. And even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah.